Hi, Captain Dylan Hubbard here from Hubbard's Marina. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about some shore fishing. A lot of people come into the area and they want an opportunity to go out and go fishing, uh, but they don't have time to go on the boat or uh, don't want to go on the boat or they get seasick. So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the shore fishing options here inside John's Pass. John's Pass is home to a lot of uh, great fish. It's a great fishery here in the pass. You could catch pompano, whiting, snook, redfish, trout, mackerel, sheep's head. You even have a chance for some sharks fishing anywhere along the pass, along our jetties, or out on Madeira Beach. Right now, in the spring and summertime, we have a lot of snook. They're traveling out of the back bays, through the pass, and onto the beach for their summertime spawn. Uh, for snook, a great option is like 30 pound fluorocarbon, about a two or three aught hook, and a free line bait. That works well along the beach. If you're fishing for snook here inside the pass, around the bridge, around the docks, more like 60 pound fluorocarbon, a same three aught hook, and maybe a free line jumbo shrimp or free line pigfish, because around the structure, you're going to need more uh, heavier line. Now, for some of the pompano, pompano, I like using about 10 to 20 pound fluorocarbon uh, and one of these naked ball jigs. The naked ball jigs work really well for pompano. As far as the colors for pompano, I like a green or a white for the pompano. The pinks work better for the hogfish offshore. Also for the pompano, some dox jigs work really well. Uh, or a fiddler crab or a piece of live shrimp, but pompano feed right along the bottom. They're looking for crustaceans and such that search the bottom. So whenever you're fishing for pompano, you're working your lure right along the bottom, popping it along the bottom, or you're using bait that's weighted to bottom. Uh, for the whiting, whiting is really easy because you can use some of this stuff right over here. Uh, the, the squid works really well for whiting. We have plenty of your frozen bait here inside Hubbard's Marina. You can use frozen shrimp or frozen squid. Uh, typically for whiting, they're fairly simple. Simple, They're not too leader shy. Uh, some of these pre-made rigs that we sell work just fine. Uh, about a one-aught uh, hook with about 20 pound, 15 to 20 pound line. Uh, you don't need a very big weight for whiting because whiting are gonna be living right on the beach. Uh, we catch uh, whiting anywhere from the North Jetty of Johns Pass all the way through Madeira Beach uh, and the whiting hang out in the surf uh, and they're looking for some uh, dead bait or they'll bite some of the live shrimp as well. Uh, what a, a lot of people make mistakes on is here is different from most places you fish. It's different from the East Coast uh, and other surf fishing along the Carolinas. You don't need one of those big surf rods. You don't got to cast way out there. Uh, these fish are traveling in that little trough, that first or second trough. So 90% of the fish we catch from our beach are only about 50 to 60 feet off the beach. So you don't have to cast very far. One of the things I tell people is as you're walking out into the surf uh, with your family or your girlfriend or something, uh, the, when you step down into the water, a lot of times you'll kind of trip over that little trough. You'll feel it. That is where those fish are traveling, looking for baits. So that is where you want to put the bait when you're fishing for the whiting or the snook along the beach. Uh, besides that, we have redfish. A lot of times redfish are caught as kind of a bycatch when people are fishing for the snook. Because uh, here inside the pass, we don't have a ton of them. Uh, but most of the time we catch the redfish on jumbo shrimp, free-lined into the current. Uh, the currents here in Johns Pass run very strong, especially around the new and full moon. Uh, so I always tell people to kind of catch the beginning or tail end of the uh, tides. When the tide isn't moving, the fishing isn't at its best. You want the tide to be moving, but if it's ripping, it's very difficult for the fish to feed. And most of the time, the big predators are hanging out behind the pilings or behind the bridge embankments or out on the beach trying to hide from that current. And they just, they might feed, but they're only going to feed when that shrimp goes ripping by them in the tide and they just poke their head out and grab it. So the ripping current isn't the best for fishing. When the current isn't moving, it's not good for fishing either. So you want to find that like mid-tide, uh, right at the beginning or at the tail end of the tide when the water's not moving too much. Uh, for trout, we catch a lot of the speckled trout here inside John's Pass at night. Let me show you one of my favorite lures for trout. 
So these mirror lures are a great option for trout. They work very well. The thing about artificial lures is you, you they're only as good as the uh, person working the lures. So you got to know how to work these lures. These are twitch baits, so you got to twitch them. You don't really reel them in. They're not crank baits. So you cast them out, let them sink a little bit, and then you twitch them back to you slowly, only reeling when there's slack in the line. The other option, one of my favorite lures for trout, are these DOA shrimp. The DOA shrimp are awesome baits, but the trick with the DOAs is you gotta work them slow. These are made to mimic a shrimp, so you have to work them as slow as a shrimp would swim. It should take you 10, 15 minutes to retrieve these baits into your line. When you get a nice long cast, it takes you a lot of time to slowly crank that bait back to you. Uh, so with the shrimp, if you think you're working it slow enough, slow down even more. That's the trick to using those DOAs. Also, you can catch trout free lining the greenbacks or free lining the live shrimp, uh, especially at night around the bridge where you see the light shining into the water or around the docks inside John's Pass. That's when the trout bite's really good. Or you could rent one of our kayaks here and take the kayaks into the islands right inside the pass. Those islands we have inside John's Pass have grass flats all the way around them, especially the east side or back side of the islands. There's a nice big grass flat. My favorite is the North Island on the east side or back side of that island. There's a huge grass flat back there and it's great for kayak fishermen because boats aren't ripping by you really fast. Uh, so the DOA shrimp or the live shrimp works really well out there. Uh, for mackerel, mackerel are pretty simple. Uh, mackerel are a very aggressive, quick biting fish. I like using these gotcha plugs for the mackerel. Uh, these gotcha plugs, you just basically cast them out. I like fishing from the jetties for the mackerel. And you cast them out all the way across the pass as far as you can. And then you just reel them back to you very quickly. A mackerel is a very fast swimming, very aggressive fish. Uh, so you cast out, let it sink a little bit, and then really crank that bait pretty quickly. Every now and again, pausing and twitching your rod tip, and then you continue retrieving that bait. Uh, so the mackerel love the gotcha plugs. They also will bite on the spro, uh, the spro bucktails we have over here. The Spro Bucktails are a great option for the mackerel too. Uh, when you're going with the Spro, I would definitely use one of the larger size heads. That way you have more casting distance and they're gonna sink down into the water a lot better and you're able to retrieve them more uh, quickly because those mackerels, they like a fast bait. If you're working the bait real slow, typically you're not gonna be too successful with the mackerel. They'll also bite on free line greenbacks or white bait. They typically will take a shrimp, um, but they like a free-lined white bait a lot more. Besides that, sheep's head. Sheep's head are really easy, especially in the winter time when the water's cooler. Uh, the sheep's head are everywhere. They're spawning in the cooler months, especially towards the end of summer. Uh, December, January, February is a great time for sheep's head fishing. Sheep's head are one of the only fish that actually bite really well behind those cold fronts we get in the cooler months. Those cool fronts really mix up the water and get it really muddy. Uh, and that's a great time to target those sheep's head in that muddy water and they actually bite better, which most fish don't bite behind a cold front. So if your trip gets canceled due to a cold front, you can always go sheep's head fishing along the pass or along the docks. My favorite bait for sheep's head are our fiddler crabs. Use a live fiddler crab with about 20 pound fluorocarbon and about a two aught hook and you let that fiddler crab go right next to one of those pilings or right next to the bridge or right along the rocks, those sheep's head are right on the structure. Uh, so if the current's running a little too much to free line it, you can use a small little split shot, but you never wanna use too much weight because those sheep's head are watching that bait fall along the piling and they'll only bite it if it looks natural. So you have to be very careful when you're targeting sheep's head uh, to make sure your bait is appearing natural. Um, besides that, we have all the licensing you need. If you want to get a fishing license, you need one to fish in the state of Florida. We have the information here where you can go online and go on the phone and buy your license over the phone. We have all the bait. Uh, we have live bait, dead bait, frozen bait, all that available to you here in our shop. Uh, we have all the beer you need and we have all the soda, water, snacks, 
and we have plenty of ice as well. So anything you need to go shore fishing, we have it here in our shop. Our staff behind the counter will be able to point you out to what's biting. Uh, we do these live videos every morning. You can go to hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing tips under the fishing trips section, and the fishing tips page has a video right at the top of it. And we're gonna talk about the weather and what's been biting. So we have plenty of great resources here at Hubbard's Marina to make you more successful when fishing from shore. Uh, we have all the rods and reels. We sell rods and reels, or if you're here on vacation, if you don't want to buy one of these rods and reels, we also rent rods and reels, and we have the cheaper rods and reels. So if you're on vacation, you're here for a week, we can sell you a rod and reel from anywhere from 25 to 75 bucks. Uh, if you want to buy a nicer rod, we have rods from 75 to 130, 140 bucks. Then we have really nice rods in the $200 uh, dollar range plus. Uh, so we have a little bit of everything, plus we rent rods for $17 a day. You get them for 24 hours for only $17. So we have a little bit of everything. We try to make it really easy for you, uh, and our staff can point you in the right direction and get you set up for success. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. So even if you can't get offshore with us at Hubbard's Marina, we'll get you set up for some great shore fishing around John's Pass.